All right, welcome back to the Newt News Podcast, everyone. Today we're going to break down the Cardinals' first series against Toronto and preview the upcoming series against the Braves. The offense showed out this weekend, but there's a couple of concerns about the pitching. But before we get into that, Gravy, can we get a quick injury update? Yeah, so starting off, uh, Contreras is back. He is back from his uh, injury where he had a a pitch from Jordan Hicks that hit his knee. Um, We're thankful that the knee contusion is nothing serious, and he was able to come back today and still hit pretty well. Um, He's currently batting 500, so um, it's a good start for him to the season. Um, Wayno, he's a little uncertain right now. We don't really know how long he's going to be out with his groin injury. It's unclear when he's going to make his season de- debut. Um, it sounds like he's he's week to week. Uh, we don't really know when he's going to come back. Um, but moving on, we have Newbar with a thumb injury that he sustained when he slid into third base on Thursday. Um, he is considered day to day and should be back in the lineup during the series with the Braves. So um, again, nothing too serious there. That's good. Um, Gallegos is out with back soreness, but it sounds like uh, his injury is um, is fine now and he's uh, he's healthy. Um, He should be available tomorrow for the first game of the series with the Braves. Right. So that was um, all the all the bad news that we have to take care of. It looks like most of our our players are going to be just fine uh, for the most part. So that that's good to hear. Um, But the Cardinals this week played their first series against the Blue Jays, took two games out of three. They dropped the opener um, 10-9. It was a little bit unfortunate. Um, but then they went on to bounce back and win the next two games. So what do you think were some standout performances from from the series? Yeah, I mean, just looking at our offense, I, I think we have an incredible lineup, probably one of the best in the MLB to start off the year at least. Um, I mean, Goldie has looked stellar. He's, he's batting 500, and Arenado is – you know, during, doing our not of things, especially with his defense, too, he's just looked amazing. Um, it, we love to see that our MB, MVP candidates are playing well to start off the year. Um, Donovan is also looking amazing with his his puck now bat and his Aaron Judge power. Um, he is fit, he's hit two home runs so far and has a um, has a uh, 1019 OPS to start off the, the series with Toronto. Um and even the younger guys too are are, are just mashing. Uh, Burleson had a homer today, and he's in the lineup during Newt Bar's absence, but he's really made his presence known. Um, and lastly, I mean Gorman uh, had a two home run game today, so he's looked absolutely incredible. And I'm really happy with how the the offense is is clicking to start off the year. Yeah, you bring up Nolan Gorman, and uh, he struggled a lot with hitting high high fastballs. Um, just chasing them last season, and I think he really worked on that this off season, and he's he's gotten a lot better with that. A lot taking a lot more of those uh, bad pitches that he would have swung at last season, and I think he looks really good. Could potentially have that thirty homer season that we all hope that he will have. Um, we've been playing a little bit of hit, hit streak here on the podcast. It's been really hard to lose at that game because every single starter, except for Alec Burleson on on Saturday, who I think got a little bit unlucky has had a hit. Um, so it's, we all have our hit streaks intact and, and and we're very happy to see that. Um, so one concern from the series was the pitching. Uh, Michaelis looked a little bit shaky. Some of the bullpen guys, especially Jordan Hicks, I think, um, didn't look that great. Do you think the pitching will be okay? Um, I mean, to start off the year, uh, we've given up a lot of soft contact and especially in the first game of the series, uh, I think there were like something like 15 singles of him, right? Does that sound right to you? Yeah, something like that. Um, and they're all they're all like soft contact hits. Um, that, and, and we just got kind of unlucky with their replacement. Um, this is not discrediting the Toronto offense. They did a great job that day. But um, in that game, you know, we got a little unlucky. Um, and even even today, the, the, some of the hits that came off of um, Montgomery's pitches were not that hard hit. Um, so I'm not too concerned there. Um, Flaherty, you know, he, he had a weird game on Saturday. He walked seven batters and, um, somehow gave up no hits in his outing, um, and was able to secure the win. So, you know, he had a, he had a weird game. Um, I think towards the end of that outing, he really showed what he does best in the strikeout stuff. 
Um, so, you know, we'll have to monitor him and see how his next couple starts go before we make any determinations about Flaherty. Um, but I think so far, you know, we've done the best we could. Toronto had a tough offense, so we knew coming into it that it was going to be a tough matchup. Yeah, one thing to note that I think the Cardinals did really well is they didn't give up a home run in this series. And when we previewed this the series, we were we were saying like there there's like six or seven guys in this lineup that could take you deep. Uh Boba Shad, George Springer, Vladimir Guerrero, of course. Um, and I think some of the Cardinal fans are, are giving the pitching a little bit not not enough credit for for not allowing a single home run. Like obviously there's a couple of things to be frustrated about, like Jack Flaherty walking seven batters. It's definitely not something you want to see especially in the first uh, in his first start of the season. But um, I think the Cardinals did a really good job of limiting hard contact. Very few extra base hits were allowed. So I think that's all that all points to the the pitching, maybe being a, even a little bit better than we thought going into the season. Um, so one thing I think I want to hit on before we cover the Braves is, is Jordan Hicks. So Jordan Hicks, I think the Cardinals still believe in him a lot to be a setup man. Um, I think he was a setup man because Gallegos, um, obviously not available the last couple games, but um, what do you think is going on with Jordan Hicks? And would you still trust him in high, high leverage spots? Yeah. I mean, I, I love Jordan Hicks and he is just such a uh, powerful thrower. He consistently throws in the, in the low hundreds. Um, but, you know, sometimes he is, he, he is shaky on the mound and he does um, have trouble locating his pitches. And I think if he if he were to work on that aspect, he would become a much better uh, pitcher. But um, as of right now, I'm I'm a little worried about him. Hopefully, he'll uh, continue to improve. Um, but we shall see how he does in the, in the upcoming series against the Braves. Another tough lineup coming up. Um. Yeah, I I actually have a little bit of a hot take. I think Jordan Hicks should should go to AAA for a little bit and and figure out his command. Um, obviously he had that, that pitch that hit Contreras in the knee. I don't think that that's not really his fault, but he shouldn't be throwing that wildly. And his command hasn't been, um, nearly what we had expected. And that's like something that he's been struggling with, like pretty much his entire career. So I think if he got sent down maybe for a couple of weeks and we call up say like Matthew Libertor, uh, to be a six starter, like long man, I think we have enough velocity in our bullpen right now to sustain, like losing Hicks for a little bit and velocity doesn't really matter if you can't, if you can't command the ball. So um, I don't know. I, I think sending him down for at least a couple of weeks would be beneficial. Yeah. And I, I agree with that take. Um, uh, one, one particular reliever has really stood out to me personally. I think Zach Thompson has looked great and he does have a pretty high velocity fastball too, around 97, 98. Um, so I think he could be that guy if Jordan Hicks were to be sent down um, one thing to consider though, I'm not sure how many options he has left. Um, how, how do you know how many options he has? Before? I don't recall the Cardinals ever sending Jordan Hicks down. I think ever since he got called up, we saw him like below 105 past those Phillies hitters. Like when he first came up, when was the Cardinal closer? So I think he, we should be fine uh, with his options. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. All right. So. Uh, moving on, do you want to give us the pitching lineups or uh, p- pitching matchups uh, for the upcoming Brave series? Yeah, so to lead off tomorrow on Monday, uh, we have Charlie Morton versus Jake Woodford, and um, we we are looking forward to see how Woodford is going to um, do in this game, especially since he's facing a tough tough lineup, and um, he will be considered the fifth starter in our rotation while Wayno is gone. Um, so. Um, I'm looking forward to see how he uh, manages in this matchup. And then on Tuesday, we have Dylan Dodd uh, for the Braves, who's making his MLB debut versus Steven Matz. And then um, for the final game of the series, we have um, we're, we're a little uncertain who the Braves starter is going to be since Max Freed is hurt. Um, but we know Michaelis is going to pitch in that game. So looking forward to see how uh, Woodford does tomorrow. Um, so what do you expect out of out of Michaelis? He had a little bit of a rough start, but I also think he got a little bit unlucky. Do you think he'll be able to to re- rebound against the that Braves lineup? Oh yeah, I think I think uh, he's always been very consistent in how he goes about his um, his starts. And I think you know the first game of the season he was probably he probably had the jitters on opening day. So um, I think he'll 
he'll bounce back pretty well in his in his uh next start. Um, not too concerned there. I think he's he has a. I mean, he he had an amazing season last year, and I think he'll um do really well this season. Yeah, I think he was overcooking uh, some of his pitches in that first inning uh, where things got got a little rough for him. I think he gave up three runs. And then later on, I think he seemed to settle back down uh, a little bit. So I think he'll be just fine against the Braves. But that Braves lineup is pretty dangerous. Uh, leading off, we have Ronald Acuna Jr., uh, who has looked really good in his first series. Uh, Matt Olson, good left-handed power bat. Austin Riley, Ozzy Albies, Michael Harris, Sean Murphy, Eddie Rosario, and then our old friend Ozuna from the Braves and Orlando Arcia to round that out. Um, so that's, again, a pretty tough lineup for the Cardinals to be facing. So I wouldn't be too uh, I wouldn't be too shocked if, say, Woodford and Mats don't do that well against this lineup. Uh, but again, that's not really a discredit to them as pitchers. Um, I just think that Braves lineup is just really, really good. Yeah, and even if that does occur, I'm very confident in our offense. And, you know, what we saw in this first series with Toronto, um, we really do have a powerful lineup and probably one of the best in the in the MLB. So I think even if our pitchers falter a little bit, we should have our guys to to back us up. Yeah, I think Charlie Morton, Dylan Dodd, and uh, whoever is going to be pitching on uh, Wednesday, I don't think – that's as scary as the Braves rotation gets. Uh, we're avoiding Max Fried because he's injured. Um, and Spencer Strider, who's like has DeGrom like stuff. So I think we're gonna be just fine, uh, hitting wise. And I, I really look forward to seeing seeing what our lineup can do. All right. So on that note, we're going to uh, pick make our picks for hit streak for tomorrow's game. So we got Charlie Morton on the bump for the Braves. Uh Gravy, who are you going to be taking? You know, give me Paul Goldschmidt. I love the man, and he uh, he looked great to start off the year, so I'm going to take him. Yeah, um, I think I'm going to go with – I went with Donovan the other day, so I don't want to go with him again. I think I'm going to take Wilson Contreras because none of us have actually taken him yet in history, and I think that's a little bit surprising. Um, I think it might be a little smarter to go with a lefty like Gorman or Donovan, but um, I believe in Contreras. Uh, he showed – his toughness when he came out to play today. He said he wanted to play on Saturday, which is pretty pretty crazy, especially after that knee injury. But, um, yeah, I think Contreras is going to get a hit off Morton tomorrow. Uh, we'll let you know what Sandy's pick is um, on Twitter and Instagram, so be sure to follow us there. All right, so before we finish this episode, just wanted to provide a little bit of uh, MPB uh, news. Uh, the MPB is the Nippon Professional Baseball League. Um, that's Japan's professional league and uh after the world baseball classic we just kind of wanted to stay in the loop of japanese baseball and sort of give you guys an update on what's happening so munitaka murakami uh last year's M mvp homered in his first at bat after hitting 55 homers last year pretty reminiscent of how aaron judge did that in his first at bat back with the yankees he also liked that an inside the park home run yesterday after the right fielder uh, made a misplay. So that was that was a pretty cool cool video to watch because um, Murakami uh, showing off some of that speed. Um, the SoftBank Hawks they gave up their first run of the season um, in the sixth inning, tying the club record of consecutive shutout innings after opening day, which is twenty three. So they threw twenty three consecutive scoreless innings before giving up a run. The NPB record from opening day is twenty five consecutive innings. Uh, so they weren't quite able to get to that mark. Uh, Rakuten Eagles closer Yuki Matsui just needs one more save to reach 200 saves in his career, and he would be the youngest pitcher in NPB history to reach that mark. Bay Stars closer Yasukai Yamasaki has set that record um, last year at 29 years and 10 months old. Matsui is currently 27, so um, he has like two years to get another save before he gets that record. Um, and Hiroshima Carp hitter Matt Davidson, uh, who came over from America, is the first Carp non-Japanese player to hit his first home run as a, as his first hit in NPB in six years. The last player to do that was Xavier Batista, who did that on June 3rd, 2017. Um, and moving into some MLB news with some Japanese players, uh, New York Mets pitcher Kodai Senga made his Major League debut today. Uh, he was the 12th Japanese-born player uh, to come from MPB and get his first win in his debut. 
Uh, four other pitchers had losses in their debut, and five others had no decisions. We can't say the same about Oakland A's pitcher Shintaro Fujinami, who had the worst MLB debut of any Japanese pitcher from the NPB, giving up eight runs in three innings. Uh, not great there, but um, he was facing a pretty pretty stacked Angels lineup, uh, including Shohei Otani. Speaking of Shohei Otani, Shohei Otani's outing on opening day was just the 26th opening day start since 1901, with 10-plus strikeouts and no earned runs allowed on opening day. Unfortunately, because they're the Angels, it's also the first time in MLB history that a pitcher has put up that performance on opening day and lost the game. Uh, so that's classic Angels right there. But the good thing is the Angels are now two and one. And uh, so we can we can have a little bit of hope that they might actually be good this year. Yeah, thank you for the updates for that. And, you know, that that is typical Angels fashion, you know, losing, losing in strange ways. But... It's great to see that Shohei is, is, you know, doing Shohei things. Thanks, everyone, for watching this episode of Newt News. We hope you enjoyed the show. Be sure to tune in every series as we'll continue doing our series previews for the rest of the season. Also, Newt News merch is available, and the link is in the description. We've got shirts, hoodies, and caps available. Any purchases help keep us running. Uh, be sure to follow us on our, all of our social media platforms at Newt News Pod on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Thanks again for listening and have a great day.